Hello YouTube, I'm back with another video. I'm bringing you a demonstration of how to adjust coilovers. Um, I currently have BC Racing coilovers installed right now. Um, why am I adjusting my height? I'm not, I mean this is, for some people this is enough of a drop. This is my rear actually, on my cord. And side note, if anybody knows how to get rid of this mark right here, it's kind of a soft mark. Um, it's actually on the, the top of the paint. It's just a, I had one of my accidents with a suitcase and it kind of just grazed on there. So if anybody knows how to get that off, please let me know in the comment box down below. And also, please don't forget to rate, subscribe, comment if y'all have any questions. But without further ado, let's continue. So like I said, this is the rear and it doesn't actually match. What's good, brah? We can't really. Anyways. Uh, this is the front here. I kind of try to match the drop all around. I mean, in my, I know like on this model in particular, the seventh generation Accord, um, the front, I don't know if y'all really know, but the front is actually raised higher on the stock uh, shocks than on the, um, on the rear, it's raised higher. So the drop is a little bit more aggressive in the front, but um, altogether, I just want the drop to kind of match the front. But anywho, um, so, and I have a video on how to install these. Um, I can put that in the description box down below as well. Uh, these are bumper releases. But anywho, um, so, <clears throat> all we have to do is, first of all, we take the wheel off. I have a five lug. Um, these are 18 by eights all around on all four wheels. So we're gonna take these off first and I'm gonna show y'all where the coilover is. So what's the tool that we're gonna to need today? The measurement caliper. Yeah, it wasn't even recording, it was just like you taking a picture. Anyways, torque bar. I have this for more leverage and you don't really need this. If you, I mean, you really don't. Um, and then I have the, of course, the lug nut key. Then I have two jack stands and the jack stand itself, or the jack itself. So let's get this party started. <laughs> Wait, did you want me to pull this sideways or up? Sideways. Whoops. This is really bad video. Oh, shit. Try to get them all torqued off first before I, um, I get them, I try to get all the bolts torqued off real, real nice before I, um, before I, uh, do any kind of work on it. Because once it's off the ground, it's going to be pretty tough getting all these bolts here. I do plan on getting a camera kit soon. Don't really need one for this model. I would prefer to have one, but I get one. She a little dusty. God damn. It's about that time, girl. Damn, your ass is looking ashy. Anywho, um, but for right now, I'm not really worried about it. Not too worried. Uh, so yeah, so let's get this bad boy jacked up. Pretty old jack, so I have to actually press this shit down, by the way. 
but it comes with the handle. Hey, because, you know, we have everything handled out here, you know what I'm saying? Sorry, guys, my hair looks like shit right now. I know you kind of woke up like this, because, you know, the first thing on my mind is the ride. That was like one of the corniest fucking statements of 2017. <laughs> my ride. <laughs> Um, if you have an old jack like this um, and your car is already lowered, I really recommend that you try to find a soft spot or a good spot on the subframe. Don't kill me, guys. I know I'm going to get a lot of criticism for that. Oh, well. Um, I put on the subframe because once you lower the car, you're not going to be able to get the jack out from the safe points or whatever they call it the lowering points or the raising points anymore because it's obviously it's going to be stuck on this here. So, um, yeah, unless you have a lower jack already, no worries, but I don't. So, let's continue. Test indicator. It's time to jack it up. It's time to jack it up, boss. The outside light is very bright. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I almost couldn't get you in the picture. That's fine. I mean, both sides are fine, but it's like if I angle the camera towards that, mm -hmm. it's gonna, you know, it's gonna readjust. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So we're gonna just take out the bolts. And this part I'm gonna speed up so you can just sit back and relax. Don't worry, um, some of the bolts are gonna be a little harder. You swear up and down that you loosen the bolt. It's just because the wheel is actually kind of sitting on the bolt. So it's gonna be a little hard to maneuver the lug nut. Sorry, not bolt, but lug nut off there. You typically I would leave one of the uh, lower the upper bolts or the lower bolts on. I'll probably leave the upper bolts on you last so that way the wheel can have like a a good uh, sitting right before I take the wheel off. But over. So now that we have it off, I'm gonna come a little closer. My brother's helping me out with the recording right now. So, damn, the lights, the light kind of sucks in here, huh? Is there a flash button on this thing? Probably not. Anyways, so this is the coil over itself. Pause it for a second. Okay. All right, go ahead. You starting that? Yeah. All right, so this is the ring here that's going to kind of 
you know, loosen up, diff loosen up the, uh, basically the adjustment portion of the um, coilover. To raise the car, we're gonna move this to the clock clockwise position. And if we want to lower the car, we're gonna turn this bigger ring here to the counterclockwise position. Therefore, compressing or, you know, adjust or relaxing, whatever you wanna say. Not necessarily compressing the spring itself, but actually moving the coil up and down. Um, so I'm about to actually bring out the tools, the other necessary tools to show y'all what it is um, I plan to do and do it as precise as possible. Be right back. All right. So this is typically how I use my caliper. Everybody's way is probably different. Um, it was already set to about 0.3 inches is what I was um, trying to go for on the rear, but this is just a front, the front wheel and I'm showing y'all examples of how I do the measurements. Typically I'll do the measurements. Okay, let's say I want a 0.30 drop, a 3.30 inches drop on the front, for example. I would measure from, basically from the fender well, from the outside, it's just the outside measurements. I'll do it from the fender well or the uh, fender here. And I would just move this right here. This is your adjuster here. So you can see as you move it, it's adjusting. I'm not gonna get it perfect the first time. It's pretty, pretty funny. Anyways, and then this will lock the, the uh, measurement tool into place so that way it doesn't move around. Oops, I pressed the on off button on accident. But you just have fun with it. You know, don't bang it on the more ground or anything like that just to make it work again. It's it's a simple tool. It was never meant to, you know, stray wrong or anything like that. So um we're moving back to the rear wheel. Oh. And these are the tools here. Come with two different size hooks. I was actually a little jelly. Um, the TN Flex Z's, they actually come with the the, um, the torque available option here. There's like a little square where you can actually put the torque bar or any kind of ratchet, it doesn't matter, um, into the into the square there. Mostly probably a torque bar. And you can actually just use it to torque that down. But I'm going to show you how it's done. BC racing style, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> So what I want first is my small, and how can you tell? I mean, they didn't really tell you, but if you have enough common sense, you can tell which one's the bigger one, which one's the smaller one. So first I want my small tool, and what I'm gonna do is turn it, which way am I turning it? Uh, I think I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise. That's clockwise. Is it clockwise? The way you're about to do is clockwise. That's kind of clockwise, yeah. So I want it clockwise. I want this clockwise so that way I can loosen up this ring here so I can adjust it. Damn. I think I'm doing it wrong. this way. This is actually good. Really now you can do that. I'm sure everybody else has their own methods. So we're gonna just loosen up this up a little bit and we're gonna um, grab our tool again. You can see there's that point whatever it was just a second ago. And it is a negative it typically starts positive. Just press the zero button when you want to start over. And I'm going to measure back up to point, about point three. Maybe I'll do point two five. Let's not get greedy. The exhaust system. As far as the exhaust system goes, yes. Um, I have another video if you want to check that out of how it sounds. It's a cat back. I also think you I'm about the greedy exhaust. The greedy exhaust. What are you talking about? The greedy cat back. For this car? No, for just any car. I was making a joke. <laughs> whatever. Uh, so, Don't it's at point three, fifteen, Don't whatever. Don't be racist. What? <laughs> That'd be exhaustless, not racist. It'd be exhaustless. Who did you call me? 
So anyways, uh, so we're gonna just grab this here. Let's say I wanna lower it. So I'm gonna move this ring up. Oh, well, actually I can just, I'm gonna move this ring up. And so I'm gonna put this bottom, this uh, bottom hook here. And I can, this bottom hook to the bottom of the uh, shock itself, the black part right here, right below the ring. I'm gonna raise this up here. To that point so I kind of get a good measurement for that right about here there we go so I'm gonna stop it here why am I stopping it here well when I'm gonna turn the big ring this the shock itself from this point is gonna move upwards so it's gonna be moving and twisting towards this this is not gonna move at all so it's just gonna be this moving towards the ring here so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the ring my precious. So, so all we're doing, simple, easy. We're just gonna, you don't have to do any banging. Bang, bang, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so we're just gonna keep going. And it's gonna get to that point eventually. As we see, well, you can't really see it. I'm sorry, the lighting is so bad in here. But it's turning. I guess we could do, a, I guess, a slick review at the same time. Ooh, let that be light, boy, Lord. Anyway, we've reached a point where it stops. So what we're going to do, I already made sure that these are tight between each other. You want these as tight as possible, so that way there's no kind of, you know, additional friction. Uh, so we're going to grab this smaller one, and we're just going to tighten this back up this way. We're gonna do the same exact procedure on the other side. Let's give it a nice little. Should be good to go. And that's that. So let's do the other side. Um, also, I want to add that this would be a perfect time for you to check for any kind of nails or any punctures in your tires. Um, it turns out that other wheel that I took off on the left side actually had a nail in the sidewall, unrepairable. So please be sure that you have tires under warranty. Um, mine are under kind of like a um, mileage warranty. And I only, I just got these bad boys. I didn't make a video on the tire, but I just got these about... A thousand miles ago, nail. It was like. So, anyways, um, so what we're gonna do is just, just do a little quick check. Make sure there's no casualties. Need some goddamn expensive ass tires, Continentals. For anybody who knows what the brand is, Continental. If you're in contact, DWSO sixes. You know that these are not cheap. So I put warranty on them bad boys. On these bad. So I lowered it just a little bit more. This is a finished result. You can't really see the difference, but in person, it looks a lot better to me, in my opinion. And that's that. If y'all have any questions, down below in the drop box, comment box, sorry. And y'all have a blessed one.